Here we are, hitting up events, drinking our way through Chicago beer, and trying not to miss a thing. Yeah, because, you know, got a cork popped out, boop, it flies like fucking 10 feet. We're like, yeah, let's do it. You know, all you have to do is add some fruit, stir it up, and ride that milkshake wave. Whenever I see him, I gotta take a photo with the most decorated brewer in Chicago, Jonathan Cutler. It'll be like the stuff you hear. You ever go to every time you go to Floyd's, all the music sounds like this. Raw, raw, raw. Sometimes you want a small beer, but really, you want a big beer. You gotta take in all those big aromatic hops. Hey, what are you doing this weekend? Waiting in line for a bottle release? You should have never been a fad. The black IPA is delicious. Hey, and welcome to Chicago Beer Pass. I'm Brad Chmielewski. Brad, what's up, man? I'm Nick White. And just to prove that I <coughs> had the glasses from the last episode, uh, here I am with our little, uh, uh, food, what are they called? The rods. The rods, yeah. Yeah, is it um, Steins? There's, Stein. there's, the, uh, there's the rods, and then there's the... Uh, the, the holder. For the it. holder for the rods, right. yeah. So I didn't remember to pull these out last week when we were drinking the proper beer, but this beer felt like it fell under the same window as uh, appropriate for the rod. This beer is delicious, Brad. Yeah, this is uh, from Hopewell, Duolandia. Yeah, it's a country lager with a crew called Wild and East Brewing. Right, out of Brooklyn, New York. It's, I don't know, this just, I was going to pick up, I'm at the store, and I was either gonna get beginner Oktoberfest party there was microphones, Oktoberfest. Yeah. One, I was like, I don't know. It's it's warm today. Exactly. I don't. I'm not ready for the malty deliciousness of fall. I balked at um getting a uh, sketchbooks Oktoberfest in favor of Harbor's Cave IPA because it was like 90. I just wanted an IPA. Okay. Yeah. So, but then I saw this on the shelf. I was like, what? Hope well. I have not seen this one from you guys. Yeah. And. Collaboration. I know nothing about Wild East from Brooklyn, but I guess the idea is malts from Indiana and hops from New York. Mm -hmm. So it says country lager in English and lawn beer. It's a rustic lager using local ingredients. I really love this beer because it just gets out the way, man. It's yeah. 5%, and it's, every sip is just really delicious. I've been, you know, you drink lagers. A lot, and they're not all created equal. Some of them have a weird aftertaste. Yeah. Some of them can be a little too hoppy. This just has a really nice tone. Yeah, yeah. and it has a good flavor, although you say it's get out, it gets out the way. It just it has a nice flavor to it. Yeah, I agree with that. And sometimes I overlook that and yeah. when, I'm, when I'm thinking about, I think about, you know, cold time or PBR. And like beer know. flavor beer. Yeah, beer flavor beer. And sometimes the flavors are really bold. So when I say get out the way, I guess I'm referring to a mild flavor. But yeah, it kind of, when you say it gets out the way, you're overlooking the flavor. So yeah, right. you're right. Well, this is more of a, a tasty flavor that gets out the way and be like, I kind of want more of that. Yeah, exactly. Where beer flavored beer is like, I drank something, I guess I need to drink more of it because I don't remember what it was. This is like, I want more. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, so we're going to crush a few of these one tiny rod at a time. Yeah. Uh, and then this past week, I made it to the beach, but that didn't involve any going any places. Yeah. But Nick made it out somewhere. Yeah, I've been talking about Casa Humilde, man, ever since I met him uh, up at uh, PBR in Milwaukee. Well, now it's it's not PBR, it's Pilot Project. Okay. So since I met him at Pilot Project, you know, and they were a coffee roaster, and they were talking about this party in Joliet they threw. And, you know, they took over this Forest Park brewery that used to be Extra Strategy. Right. Okay. Forest Park's out there by Oak Park. Yeah, I went to Extra Strategy once maybe twice forgetting that i went one other time but yeah so. i only went because becker dude was there okay and the energy left the room as soon as becker dude was done it's cleared out yeah exactly so uh so how did the place look same it's the exact same space did they have their blue door no and what? there's no sign on the place either what? um they did have a bunch of benches outside and i don't remember exit strategy doing that Okay. Yeah, so there's a lot of outdoor seating. I think that's where the parties are going to be. A lot of nice snake plants that kind of act as a wall to, from the street. Okay, you well, know, that's so, good because yeah. it's right there on the main street. Exactly, on Madison Street in Forest Park. So, yeah, it was um, it was good, you know, dog-friendly, you know, that kind of thing. 
a lot of and some kids there, not a lot, a lot of people there. Um, it's funny because I talked to a, there was some lady who was a lawyer and she was she was petting the dog. Yeah. And she, I was like, have you did you come when this was exit strategy? She's like, yeah. So we're just here to support, you know. And she's like, these tacos are really little. Because you know, I had a fish taco and a steak, a ribeye steak taco. Okay. Um, the steak taco had, um, you know, some kind of bean salsa on it. It's like uh, Friol's Deola. It's like a known uh, pinto bean uh, spread. S- yeah, salsa basically. Full, full, okay. full. Does uh, Frito Lay make it? Is whole it in beans, the, is right? It like in the little can. I don't know. No? <laughs> but it was weird because I don't. I'm not familiar with it, you know. So I was like, I don't. I just want a regular taco. Yeah. Onion, cilantro, diced up, charred steak. Mm-hmm. But I didn't get that. You get like a rib cap. You know, and you get this bean salsa, basically. Okay. And they're very little, and they're eight dollars each. Like Big Star, little uh, or not, smaller? No, than... a little bit, so slightly larger. Slightly larger than Big Star, because Big Star is pretty. Big Star is like two, maybe three bites. Yeah. So this is three, maybe four bites. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So they were fine. Um. And then was this lady commenting like she lives over there? Uh, and you're gonna well Chicago in general, but also over there like Cicero's right there. So you're gonna have a lot of good taco exactly spots. Yeah. We've all had a glorious taco. Right. We know what delicious tacos are. Everyone does. There's so many people right. making homemade tacos from wherever they're from. And I know delicious expensive tacos. Like yeah. Big Star is a very good yeah expensive taco. So this was an eight dollar taco, but was is the juice worth the squeeze? Mm. I, I don't know. I, I would say no because it was it was kind of tiny, and I wasn't the only one that picked up on that. So that was pretty funny. Um, That's not a good, I guess, starting off point for them is like you place it off as food. We talked about this last episode. We talked about this a lot. Yeah. The food's going to get people in the door mm-hmm. these days. And when you can go get a bigger taco for half the price, yeah. and then you're not going to go pay expensive taco prices and expensive beer prices. Yeah, exactly. So it was cool. I mean, everything came in a super cool um, mug. You know, mm. almost like a mug club mug, branded mug club mug that had micheladas, you know. So it was a cool experience. You know, the tacos just weren't my jam. Okay. Um, yeah, I was just like, I was expecting them because I liked their beer. I was expecting them to bring it with the kitchen. I was excited for them. But, right. So, I mean, they left a, they left something on the, something to be imagined there. So, Because uh, you have places like, uh, uh, what am I thinking, of Rick Bayless's place. Yeah. Uh, Oh, uh, Frontera Grill or uh, Cruz Blanca. Uh, Cruz Blanca. Yeah. You can go there. You can get that taco pizza. Yeah. And that feeds a family. Yeah. And you're having great beer. So I feel like, and then we got Ravinia doing their taco thing. So yeah. tacos and beer don't really bring anything to this game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, you know, there's room for improvement. So, and I know, you know, f- watching their feed, much like Metric Coffee, they're just building it all themselves. You know? Okay. So, I mean, they'll take feedback and maybe make some adjustments. But, you know, it's nice to go. I didn't think – I get excited about opening week, you know, for anything. Right. You know, so whether it's Casa Hamil Day or I was at Harper's Cave when they first opened and, and Niles in the strip mall, you know, there's something about the energy of opening week that makes me want to go. Right. And then think about the open week and this price thing. Remember when you went to that brewery that opened from New York? Oh, that, fucking uh, other half. Does that still – that yeah. buzz of that died down – so quick yeah. that even even on Sox game days, well, I don't think the Sox are drawn, but even like opening day, right, the, okay. even when things were weren't hopeless, <laughs> um, the, the, you could still we have the little league team playing. <laughs> and no one's showing there up. There wasn't a lot. There wasn't a lot of buzz at uh, Romova, but also you know, Romova wasn't making their own beer at the time. They probably are now. Yeah, I, I, there was a licensing thing. Todd, Todd the Axeman was on. Todd the Axeman from uh, he was at Three Floyds before that. He was at uh, Sterling. So he's brewing there. Oh, right. But they were importing beers from wherever their main brewery is. Right. New York somewhere. But they they, lo- they listened, lowered prices a little bit on that beer. So yeah. maybe Castle Mille Day would bring their taco prices down. Or something. Touch. But or maybe that's just a going rate for tacos when we leave the city. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I will gl- I will I'm fine paying that price for tacos yeah. at Big Star in Wrigleyville. Because mm. Okay, fifty dollar margarita picture, fine. You can get after it, man. Fucking Wrigley, man. I mean, I'm not one to say go hang out in Wrigley, but if you go to Wrigley, that margarita picture at fucking Big Star, and across the street they got a bourbon, um, uh, they got a they got a Manhattan picture. Um, I think it's an old fashioned. They got an old fashioned picture at the um, at, at the stadium. No, no, oh. no, at the uh, 
Not at the at stadium. At, smoke at, Daddy? At, at the Smoke Cheval. At Smoke Cheval. At Smoke Cheval. At Smoke Cheval. Cheval. It's a, the most ridiculous Smoke Cheval you'll ever see. Okay. It's fucking nuts. It's their flagship. So you, you got uh, pastrami topped on the burger. The pastrami comes from uh, Green City Smoked Meats. They got these fucking ridiculous pictures of uh, old fashions and Madden's. It's, nuts. It's, it's it's nuts. And there's two floors and there's a patio. It is ridiculous. Okay. It's cool as fuck. Even for somebody who goes to Smoke Cheval a lot, you'll actually feel like you've been there for the first time. Damn, okay. Yeah, it's fucking nuts. I guess that brings me to like kind of what I want to talk about. Maeve's uh, sister and husband are coming in for his birthday. Yeah. They've been to Chicago before. They were here recently, yeah. and we, we hit up a bunch of spots. But where do you take people, or what do you recommend yeah. people uh, who are from out of town? And, yeah. like, what do you do? Right. This he is... loves he loves hot dogs, Chicago dogs. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to, we're going to Sox Park. Okay. Because he wants that foot-long dog. It's Comiskey, funny, yeah. Comiskey I, dog. I didn't, know, yeah, I didn't know that was Comiskey dog. But you can get the foot-long at uh, Wrigley, Wrigley, too. Okay, yeah. Uh, but you know the food and beer selection is really good at. Socks. I think it's 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 better at Sox Park. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing that doesn't suck at Sox Park, the beer and food. But the problem is once you're there, and you're leaving. Where do you go? There's nowhere to go, right? Where do you go? Yeah, it's right off the highway. It's in. Mar- it's near Pilsen, uh, and it's near Bridgeport. Right, Mars is is far to walk to. Um. Yeah. That's a long. There's walk. nothing really close. The tailgate, the option to tailgate is is enjoyable. Um, they do whiskey at Comiskey there a lot. But you can just take the red line down there and be coming from downtown. Yeah, so if you're on foot, like, what do you, what's the what's the post game? Right. This is a legit question. The closest brewery is that Remova Theater. Okay. Um, um, other half thing you talked about. And then there's a cocktail bar across the street called uh, Electric Funeral. So it's like a funeral-themed cocktail bar across the street from... Um, from Ramova. Okay. Yeah. So that's a, that's a good one two step that's closest to the park. Um, but after that, yeah, are you going to Maria's? Maybe Maria's is closer to Mars. You know, if you just want like classic old school in the way that Clark Street Ale House or uh, Hop Leaf is pushing it, but it's from that era yeah, of okay. really cool fucking Chicago bars. Beer bar. Kind yeah, of place. Chicago beer bars. Yeah, like the, the first wave of very cool Chicago beer bars. Yeah. But Mars. almost. In that case, because we're going to the Sox game, I think it's it's the last home game. Okay. I think it's during the day anyway. I might just head back north and just like go for like a nice brunch yeah. and get the day started and then just kind of take it easy because yeah. it's a Sunday too. And that's the beauty of the town, right? Like, you know, you can go out there for this one specific thing. And you're not obligated to just do the stuff out there. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like a tale of three cities, you know. You're downtown, you're north, you're south. Right. You know, and a lot of people party out west. So, you know, you know, you can. there's a lot to get into. Right. So know? that where, besides something like that, like, yeah. where are you taking people to either to drink or eat? Yeah. Um, from out of town, I'm probably taking people to Cindy's rooftop. Okay. That's somewhere I never go, but every time I go, I'm just really impressed at how cool it is. The, the view, the aesthetic, you know, the location. That's a good you one, know, yeah. It's just pretty cool. You know, you could overlook in Millennium Park, you know, that kind of thing. Um, man, where am I going after that? I'm probably going somewhere in, in Logan. I'm probably doing where we were talking about. My favorite one-two step in Logan right now is... Uh, it's for out of town, or this is a little different, but I would the Salamoth and then the uh, the pizza joint next to Giant. Um, I think it's called uh, Pizza Mata. That's my favorite one two step right now. Pizza Mata, yeah. What's Pizza Mata got? Pizza Mata is a, a tavern style uh, pizza joint uh, run by the folks who own Giant, which Giant is a, a no frills. It's it's I would describe it as a fine dining restaurant with no frills. You come as you are, you wear what you want, but the fine dining experience is on par with any other fine dining experience. Okay. It's fine dining for people who don't like fine dining. Sure. You know, like... Can you take the Mata Pizza to go and just go over to Still and Life? J- and go to Still Life. Yeah. You can do that? You can do that. Or you can take the beer from... You can have a pint at Still Life and then walk the beers down to Mata because Mata's only got... Um, you can like, take your beer... You can't, well, you can't oh, yeah. o- have take open beer. Oh. <laughs> you can drink beer there and get some to go and go to Mata. Oh, because they don't have a um, uh, liquor license. It's like BYOB. Yeah, you can bring you can BYOB at Mata, okay. and Mata is a pizza you want to eat there. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's probably the better than take your pizza, take your beer. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Either, either or, depending on what you're getting into. But you do have, you know, Middlebrow right there. Yeah. 
but I don't think you're in on middle brow. I'm not in on middle brow, but I just have to, you know, you're talking pizza and mm-hmm. beer right there. They're part of the conversation. They may not be included, but they're yeah, mentioned. For sure. Right? Um, yeah. I would go to a small bar, get the patty patty please burger. Uh, and I would get the uh, banana daiquiri. <laughs> banana daiquiri. <it's> shit. <laughs> I would go there. Um, where else would I go? Well, we just talked about the. I think there's something special, and I'm not a I'm not a Cubs fan by any stretch. There's something special about that little intersection of uh, you know Lucky Door, which is the bar at Wrigley, that outside of Wrigley. Okay. Um, big Star on Game Day, and Small Cheval across the street. I think there's something special there, and then there's a uh, Mordecai, which is right next door to it, or a couple doors down. Yeah. You know, before you hit the light, um, it's a it's a fancy cocktail bar with like vintage spirits. And shit like that. So that's a nice little section to, to hit up to. That's true. Yeah. So those are, and then you know, there's an inner like most cities have their ballparks set off the expressway. Here you come to Chicago. There's you know, it's like the fucking it's like the state fair meets the carnival with a hundred year old stadium that just got re that just got rebuilt. Mm-hmm. You know, just got updated. But you got to be there on a day, like on a game day, because even as soon as the game ends, I've gone for cocktails yeah. right there across the street. It's it's, it's empty by the time you're done with a cocktail. It's yeah. like, where did everyone go? Yeah. So. They're just like from out of town and they peace out. Yeah. Those are some uh, things. Those are some things I would do. Yeah. I was thinking uh, the Ravenswood Corridor. Yeah. Malt Row. Malt Row. Malt Row. You have a nice. I mean, come on. You got a nice ride there. Yeah. Uh, there's always scooters and divvies over there, so it's yeah. pretty easy if you don't want to walk the whole thing. Yeah. You can start at Beguile and Dovetail. So, you know, we're drinking this country lager on yeah. these Dovetail rods. Yeah. Then you got Hop Butcher if you want to go there. You got Is Was. Uh, I don't think Hop Butcher has food, but I think you can bring food in. Mm-hmm. You can bring food into Is Was, into uh, Dovetail, into Beguile. Yeah. Into spiteful, if yeah. you want to go down to spiteful, yeah. and then you do your thing at half acre if you're still going. For sure, uh, Malt Row's amazing, and then um, just the option of you know some of the best breweries in the country, like according to the people who vote on magazines, you know, um, Dovetail and Hot Butcher. Right. Those are those are national destinations for some people, so to have those within walking distance of each other is actually very cool. Right. We overlook that. It's a lot, though, for, like, out-of-towners and just in general for anyone to hit up on a afternoon, like, yeah. brewery crawl to, what's that, the six breweries yeah. there? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, what about, like, a Logan Square? Well, you did, you said Still Life. I was Still Life. I would go to... um. Andersonville? It, it, um, if you're on a Monday, well, you can do the Andersonville romp of um, Lonesome Rose and uh, Pizza Lobo. That's true. It's right there. And then Hopleaf, of course. That's a good That's a good neighborhood right. romp. Um, I would try to go. I'm, I'm in Avondale. I would go to um, I would go to Warlord. Um, there's a line usually, you know, on most days, but on Mondays, um, that's the hack to, to avoid the line is that you just go on a Monday. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then that place is really good. The menu changes every week. They there is no signage. <laughs> There's no reservations. It's like a very, it's a very cool thing. Okay. Yeah, I think it's like it's not Michelin star, but it's Michelin recommended, whatever that's called. You know. Yeah. Uh, Bib Gourmand. Exactly. Thank you, Bib yeah. Gourmand. Yeah. Um. Then after that, man, I'd probably hit up some of these. Uh. You know, Chicago's a really cool dining town, so you it, you owe it to yourself to hit up one of these kind of classic uh, restaurants that everyone knows about. I don't know. You're going beer, hot dogs, and pizza. You want beer, is hot that, dogs, and pizza? Is that all you yeah. need? There's maybe, I mean, you know, Chicago's not a, you know, Chicago's got a lot of moves, so right. you don't have to do Just all of it. Stick to no frills, yeah. kind of. If you're going no frills, yeah, a warlord would be no frills because you can't even reserve it. Yeah. Right. So I would say warlord. Um, and now we're, now we're talking cocktails. Where do you go for cocktails, you know? I would nightcap it in Logan at a place called uh, Metal Lark. Metal Lark. Okay. Metal Lark. It's uh, by the old, uh, you know, it's right down the street from uh, like, like Cali and uh, you know Fullerton, kind of like uh, where the old piece in the shop place was that people got pissed when they got sold. Um, boiler room. Yeah, it's right next door to Boiler Room. Okay. Yeah, it's a it's a cocktail bar, and it's run by the guy who used to run the cocktail program at um 
at Violet Hour. Okay. Yeah. You know what's a good beer slash cocktail place that you could take someone to? Sleeping, uh, not Sleeping Village. Uh, yeah, Sleeping Village. Sleeping Village is a music joint? Yeah. Yeah. They got a lot of beers on tap. They do. They got cocktails on tap. They got a patio. They got a patio. And you know, you see a live show. Right. You know? And it's yeah. really good people watching there because there's <laughs> a show there. That's funny. So you kind of never know who you're going to get coming in there. Yeah. So, I mean, those are all good options, you know? And a lot of what you get into depends on where you're, you know, where you're located. Yeah. Because you know? if you're in a city proper, you know, where, where are you staying? You know, that, that plays into it. But I think we, we just named off a lot of cool places to go. Places that I would go. You right. Know? Places that if, if people were in town, I think they would probably be just, they would be glad they went. What breweries are making also cocktails? Yeah. You got um, uh, Alarmist has a liquor license, so they're doing cocktails with their beer. Maplewood. Maplewood. Um, I guess uh, probably Ravinia does. Any of them that have food, probably. Probably. A lot of breweries have, modern breweries have like a cocktail program, you know. Yeah, and mo- if they have the license, mm-hmm. you know, um, like Cruz Blanca. Cruz Blanca is going right. to make some good ass cocktails too. But they, right, got, right? Yeah, they got food. Yeah, so. so. But yeah, Beguile and Dovetail yeah. and Spiteful, they're not. Spiteful might. I, don't, I haven't been in a while. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, maybe. Because that is the problem with people who are out of town and just guests in general giving like a well rounded, not always beer experience. Yeah. So you want to. Well, everyone have options. Yeah, this is true. Yeah, so. Would you take anyone to the suburbs? Would you get in the car? If we're going to Three Floyds? For what? You can't get in. I mean, look exa- at exactly. So what are we doing? Are we going no, to? No, you're not taking anyone. It, what else were you doing out there? I went to a place called Fox Hill on the Lake. Okay. Um, it's an old church. It's got stained glass. It looks just like the church when it was open. It sits on some kind of man-made lake. Um, I guess it's the Fox Hill Lake. It's actually not too far from Rosemont Horizon yeah. or Allstate Arena. Um, this place is fucking badass. I went there after we work one day, and um, I was I was like, this is going to be all bark, no bite. It's going to look cute, and it's going to suck. Man, these dishes came out, and they were money. These cocktails came out, and they were a hit. I was okay. like, yo, this is probably the best kept secret. So it's called Foxtail on the Lake because there was another foxtail in like Downers Grove or some shit. And um, this is their second location, so they know what they're doing. Okay. And this is Fox Hill on the Lake because it literally sits on the lake in this old decommissioned church. That's my favorite part. It's a gorgeous space, Brad. Like, honestly, man, I think it's the best kept secret in Chicago land is this fucking spot. Oh, shit. It is, fucking, it is fucking cool, man. Um, Worth leaving the city I with, believe with guests? Yes. I would leave the city. If you want to escape occupied Chicago and not go too far, you know, you're just shooting up basically past O'Hare a little bit. Okay. I would I would go to the Foxtail on the Lake, you know, and it's a, another one of those come as you are places. Like they're coming to impress the people who work there, are trying to impress you. But you ain't got to show up in nothing fancy. We can show up in the shit we're wearing now, you know. Yeah. You know, you can put a collar on if you want to. You know, I like places like that where you know the shit is tight, but you don't have to dress any certain way. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, but there's not a brewery that you're like you're from. You're from Portland. You gotta go. We're going to more. I would go to uh, a lot of people. Tell you the best, some of the best su- breweries in the city. In the some of the best breweries are in the suburbs. People say more. People say microphone. People say phase three. I'd leave the city for phase three. I um, never left the city for phase three. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it just depends on what you're into, right? It depends on what you're into. Sure. Um, uh, microphones are one of my favorite places to be. You know, but. Um, some people really like more. I think more is cool. I don't have nothing bad to say about more. I'm not going out of my way to go to more, but I mean, I do like more. Right. It know? is, uh, either one you're going to is a drive. So, uh, you're limited time yeah. when people are visiting. Yeah. Um, but those are the ones that if I'm leaving the city, I'd probably go to those. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For sure. I'm trying to think of who else. Maybe three Floyds, but they, you know. They know I went. You know, side note, you want to hear something funny? Um, okay. I went to the Common. Uh, Common had a free show at Millennium Park, or um, yeah, Millennium Park. You know, right downtown. Right. Yeah, fireworks and shit. It was 20th anniversary of Millennium Park. So anyway, I run into a bunch of guys that drink beer, and they're like, "What are you doing?" So we go to uh, oh Coconut Deeth and all that shit was on at the Brev uh, Brew Pub, and I never go there. So I'm like, "Well, we can go and meet there." 
you know, get some VSOJ, get some coconut ID after the post game. And these boys were from Indiana. Okay. And they were like, I was like, man, what's up with Three Floyds? And he was like, I don't know, I need to get this shit together. Because that's the best restaurant in Indiana. <laughs> in Indiana? I'm like, the whole state? And, you know, one of the guys was from Gary, and the other one was from somewhere else, Crown Point, Maryville, I don't know. Okay. Northwest Indiana. And he was like, man, Indianapolis included. It is the best restaurant in the entire fucking state. Damn. And I was just like, well, the first time I ever had a burger, and I thought it was the greatest burger ever, was Floyd's. Cheese curds, greatest cheese curds ever, Floyd's. It was, it was, it was a... It was a milestone. It was memorable as fuck. So. Uh, yeah, do you... Th- it's getting off topic here. But do you think it was as good as you remember or it was the first time you were having those things so mm-hmm. it's like imprinted in your brain? Sort of like the first time you were introduced to craft beer or when you first get into music. Yeah, you're for like, sure. Oh, yeah, con- like common or someone like that yeah. it's just like oh yeah this is the first time i realized this could be this some and of so- it some of it is definitely that what i do respect about them and sometimes I get annoyed by them is that they always tweak everything right sami dust is not the same behemoth is not the same and the restaurant was the same way constantly tweaking constantly bringing out new shit so you know the experience the feeling of having something great every time i went never left but yeah, some of that stuff was, my mind was blown. You know? Right, because now everyone has a lot of that stuff now, and we're sort of like, give me that beer-flavored beer and a burger. Yeah. And just, where's your where's your wings and your burger? That's what I want yeah, exactly, now. Yeah. And everyone's like, no, I got bone marrow super, pate super with... Super elevated, fancy shit. Coconut stout yeah. strawberries. <laughs> super fucking fancy elevated shit that no one, <laughs> that no one asked for. Right. No, for sure. Uh, which, yeah, you know, I hope that I somehow figure that out, but I feel like at this point, why? Yeah. You've gone six years, seven years with no restaurant? Yeah. They're open and they're doing um, the crew that runs, um, what's that Iowa based pizza joint? There's one on Roots. Roots, the team behind Roots is um, managing Three Floyds. I liked Roots and every they just keep closing here. Yeah. So we'll see. Hmm. All right, and I'm sure we're missing a lot of places, but I think that I don't know it's fun to try to figure out where you would go. Yeah, for sure. Uh, all right, that's gonna do it for this episode. We're gonna be back hopefully uh, next week with another one. Take care. Cheers. <laughs>